In this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about AI and its impact on the cybersecurity industry. And we're ultimately going to be answering the question, are cybersecurity jobs safe from AI or is AI going to take over? And the answer might surprise you. So stick around till the end. So we do know that AI is now being used in a lot of cybersecurity tools. It's already automating loads of tasks been used in stuff like threat detection, penetration testing, vulnerability scanning, and so much more. However, I still don't think it's at the stage where it can interpret complex situations, understanding broader business context, and make strategic decisions. Apple published a really interesting paper last week called Understanding the Limitations of Mathematical Reasoning in Large Language Models. It's a really interesting read. I'll link it in the description. But essentially, the conclusion is that AI is not able to actually think in a way that a human would so in terms of the intelligence it's actually not got any inherent intelligence what it does is basically very complex pattern matching so it looks at someone else's or something else's reasoning and thinking and picks which line of reasoning is best to copy for that particular situation. It doesn't actually approach a question or something posed to it with genuine intelligence. It just thinks, what other reasoning or thinking patterns can I copy to help in this scenario? The paper dives deep on this and of course there's a lot more in there. One of the issues it has problems with is if you asked it a question like Tom has 10 coffees and Sarah has 15 coffees and Jim has 8 coffees and 4 of the coffees that Jim has are really small how many coffees do we have in total the four being small isn't really relevant if you're looking at it from a human's perspective because that wouldn't impact your addition but ai kind of gets confused by statements like this because it's not again able to reason and it can easily throw it off which i'm sure you've seen in all the kind of random mistakes chat gpt and all the other ai tools are making limitations aside Cybersecurity is an arms race and attackers are constantly evolving their techniques and are now using AI to increase the sophistication of their activities and attacks. So what we have to do in the industry is also use AI and we already have to some degree to help with the defensive side of things or simulating offensive AI activities to better understand them. But one of the things that's really interesting about cybersecurity in general is sometimes there are things that are just brand new, never seen before. And it definitely takes like experience and a bit of context to really understand how to handle these never seen before scenarios. But trusting AI to do that is not something a lot of businesses would be safe with. I guess some would argue that you could train AI to be better at this, but ultimately we already know that AI can be manipulated, it can be abused and it can be used in malicious ways. I think the creativity and like unpredictability of humans and cybersecurity. It's gonna be an area where like AI in general, or more specifically LLMs, are gonna be in a constantly uphill battle, always kind of one step behind trying to keep up. Then of course, there's like a bunch of ethical and legal issues and privacy issues when it comes to like managing incidents or concerns around, you know, human data. Ultimately, you need that level of human discretion and understanding in making decisions. And AI systems will not always kind of account for these complex nuances that exist you need that human judgment that people can provide and it's also a thing of comfort i mean if you imagine like you manage a bank and there's a huge cybersecurity incident if you were to call a cybersecurity specialist or a team to come down you've got kind of boots on the ground people making you feel comfortable calming you down telling you what to do next and dealing with the situation essentially that level of human to human kind of assurance and working together is something that i think will be pretty much impossible to replicate with ai i mean if your whole bank or your whole company's down are you really going to trust a chatbot to talk you through the situation or do you want someone that's kind of done it before been there before and handled it before even if the ai has i think in those kind of panicky emergency type situations people really do need a friendly smiley face someone helping you deal with it who's professional and will just get it done ultimately emergencies and incidents like that require context empathy a bit of understanding and someone to kind of hold your hand through the whole process so how i think of it is ai is not here to basically take over any cybersecurity professional's job per se it's more like 
it's here to kind of reshape tools and processes and how we use them. And it already has in a lot of cases. So it's just automating repetitive tasks, helping you find information quicker and get context and be like an assistant for you, which will of course increase your productivity and your output. It's like that saying AI won't replace you, but someone using AI will, because it will get to a point where you have to use AI to kind of perform at a high level in that role. So I think if us as security professionals, as a cybersecurity industry, fail to embrace AI and kind of ignore it and put it to the side as like a not ready, but maybe in the future we'll think about this. Our understanding of the tools, how to use them, our productivity, our efficiency will start to fall and it'll quickly be outpaced by those who do use AI. So one person could potentially handle the work of three and with cybersecurity being like an output project driven kind of industry, we need to save time, we need to do things quicker, better, and AI can be used to help with that. But I don't think it will be a direct replacement. A good analogy, and I don't think it's quite there yet, is you've got to think of like farms back in the old days, is you'd have people plowing the fields, tending to the kind of agriculture and looking after the farm very manually, probably like hundreds, maybe thousands of people per farm. And then tractors came about. Now tractors could do a lot of what the farmers used to do. So then a lot of people, you know, like 70% of the world used to work on farms and then suddenly most of that 70% were like, oh, now we have to do something else. And then it kind of moved over to offices and industrial age and blah, blah, blah. But the tractors didn't necessarily replace all the humans. You suddenly had to become a tractor driver or a tractor operator. And of course there was less jobs for the large part of people. But that's kind of how I see AI coming when it gets to a stage which is a long time away before it's at the tractor level. Let me just be clear, this isn't happening anytime soon where it can actually replace a portion of the industry. And I say a portion because I don't think it will be anywhere near that 70%. And another thing that's happening in farming, which I've seen recently, which is kind of timely considering the video, is drones are now being used, which can fly in almost any kind of condition. So tractors don't do well through really wet mud or soil, you know, any particular conditions so their wheels can basically spin. Drones obviously don't have that requirement. So now there's some experimentation and drones are being used in them now. So if you think of farming, it's gone from manual tools, maybe horses, but largely like a manual process to then tractors being used to do most of the work, but you still need people to operate the tractors and some people to do some manual tasks. And then now it's moving on to drones. And I kind of think like, if you truly wanted to be a farmer, you probably need to know a little bit of all three. You need to know how to do stuff manually. You also need to know how to operate the drone and the tractor. And then there's a few additional things you have to learn, like how to maintain the tractor, the drone, how to look after it, upgrade it, service it, change the oil, fill it up with petrol or charge it or whatever it might be. And I think that's kind of the position we're kind of in right now where we know the tractors and drones are coming. And a lot of people are still there plowing the fields, which they should be doing because the work needs to get done, i.e. working their normal jobs. But if you really want to keep up with the industry, you're going to have to learn how to operate the drones and the tractors, i.e. learn how to use the AI. Just play around with it, get good at prompting it, do a bit of research on its background, stay up to date with developments if anything new changes, maybe look at its history and kind of how it's evolved. And it's not really changed much, it's just computing's got a lot more powerful, so we can have these large language models. But yeah, don't be scared of it. Try and work it into your daily tasks and stay up to date with it. But yeah, I still think it's a long time away. It's nowhere near where it needs to be. And in its current state, I don't think it ever will be good enough to do human level reasoning unless the whole underlying technology changes with it. It's not just about feeding it more data and it will get better. That's still limited to replicating reasoning as opposed to true artificial intelligence. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you've liked this one. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. My apologies for not having a video out in a little while. It's just been crazy with work, family, going to the gym. And yeah, I'm gonna try and get back into a regular posting routine. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.